Yo, yo, so today we're going to be doing the Porter Pack ADS-B portion and what it does and what it can do as far as the receive side of things. This is not the transmit side yet. We'll get that in a much later video, but right now we're doing the receive side. So uh, before this plane hops out of my area, because I've been trying to get this video done for a few weeks now, but uh, my air traffic is slow. So right now you can see on the Porter Pack that we are looking at an airplane. It is going 436 miles an hour. Uh, the hit is how many uh, pings I'm getting from that plane. Before that plane goes out, we're gonna tap on the center button here and it's gonna pull up some of the data. So it is the ICAT is a C07 uh, FB-9. The call sign is WJA1599. And it was last seen one second ago, two seconds ago, three seconds ago. Uh, it's a WestJet. It is coming from Canada. And let's go ahead and see it on the map right here. So looking on the map, and it looks like it is going, it looks like it's actually going towards Canada. One thing that I forgot to mention was that if you go to your map, you're going to scroll down to where you're no longer in the lat long area, and then you can zoom in. There you go. And all the way up. Uh, elevation is 4,000 feet, 435 miles an hour. It shows the lat and long there. Now, if you go back to that first page, you got your AC details. Let's look into that real quick. So there we can see the ICAO, which we'll get to what that means here in a second. Uh, the registration, the manufacturer, the Boeing 737-7CT. It's a land plane. It's got two engines and the owner is WestJet. So that's kind of cool. We're going to get to like what all that means uh, here as we discuss further what ADS-B actually is. So we go back out here now to the front area. We can still see that that plane is no longer in my hit range because it has grayed out. If it is in a good hit range and, and you're like a, a good signal is coming in, you'll see the little crosshairs right there. They'll go a bright green. Like, oh, there they go. I just got another hit. So, um... And that's the same plane still, I believe, right? Yeah, same plane. So, so this is a wing aeroplane company, United States. Let's go and see this one on the map. And this one is flying, it looks like in the same path. So there you can see it's showing both planes there. The UAL 1958, I believe. This is a 737-824 land plane, two engines. This is owned by United Airlines. All right, so over there you can see the two green bullseyes pretty much uh, both great hits it's showing your hit uh, your hit uh, total count and then that bottom one just dropped off and then it just came back in so I am inside I'm in the middle of my house right here and I'm only using the stock telescopic antenna because with ADS-B uh, the frequency range is so high that you really don't need a big antenna to receive those signals so let's get into what ADS-B is so the history goes back to the late 90s with the initial concept. From there, it would go into early development by, the, by, by 2010. Um, once the FAA realized the importance of keeping our air traffic secure, a whopping nine years later, they implemented for all commercial and civilian aircraft to be equipped with ads -B by 2020. It's kind of sad that that took that long, you know, if we want to get into uh, what happened on 9-11. ADS-B is pretty much the GPS system for airplanes, if you want to just kind of simplify it, right? Uh, what does ADS-B actually do? It gives a visual reference on their screens of or HUDs uh, of traffic conditions in, in the airwaves. Consider it like a, like a way, like Waze. If you're familiar with Waze, for, um, it was a traffic app that most of us use if we lived in a bigger city. Like I came from Houston and uh, we use Waze there a lot to kind of figure out like, like where cops were, uh, where accidents were happening and how traffic was on certain freeways and, and highways and such. So um, consider ADS-SB like that. It is a visual reference for other aircraft to see where those aircraft are coming and going uh, to avoid, obviously, in air collisions. What are the security concerns of ADS-B? Well, in 2012, 
there is a speculation that the FFA was notified that ADS-B is not encrypted and spoofing is very much possible. Um, the FAA's alleged response was that they are aware and didn't have any countermeasures regarding encryption, but they would rely on multilateration system, i.e. aircraft pings to tower, tower pings to aircraft, and that measurement is where the aircraft actually is. Um, it's broken into two parts, uh, LADD or limit, limiting aircraft data displayed, or PIA, or Privacy ICAO Aircraft, or Privacy International Civilian Aviation Organization. So, um, I think that plane pinged out earlier, but we did see that if you go here, up here at the top area, we see the ICAO, which is C07FB9, right? So, what does that mean? Well, if you want to consider LADD, it's limiting the aircraft data displayed. So this aircraft, for instance, doesn't really have too much limits on it. You know, we can see where it's going, who, um, the airline it's coming from, and then we can even see who owned it, right? The call sign, yada, yada, yada. We go to the AC details. Again, we can see the owner was WestJet. We can see all this really interesting data that we, that if it was under a different um, registration program we would not be able to see that right that's kind of what LAD and, and PIA um, or PIA ICAO means this means that when we pull the data to view ownership type aircraft or except the information we receive is dependent on how the aircraft is registered so um, consider it like uh, all this is uh, this is assigned by CAR or civil aviation Re register it's almost like a form of VPN for aircraft if that kind of simplifies like what this actually is um, you know, uh, I haven't done it yet, but I know like if you use ADS-B over areas or by areas such as Area 51, uh, you can see a few videos of guys out there that have gone out to the desert and kind of taken their flight aware systems and in, in ADS-B trackers and planes going into Area 51 actually register as Janet. ADS-B has an in and out feature, right? So what we're, what, we're, what we're seeing here is the out feature of that aircraft, right? Now, if we were in an airplane and we had ADS-B equipped with us, that would be seeing its out area, right? We would be pinging out at the aircraft and the traffic control and saying, hey, here's, here's where we're at, right? So something that you can that you may not know actually is that, and the reason why we have the DJI uh, little drone here, is that these drones, whether you believe it or not, from DJI actually have ADS-B out, or sorry, in with them, right? So that means that if I'm flying this drone and an airplane is coming into my area of my legal flying zone, DJI's app on my phone, and I, and I have had this happen to me, where DJI's app actually pings a little message on my phone and it says, aircraft inbound, please lower altitude, or you know, pretty much it'll say return home and it'll actually start descending the, my, my drone. So that's kind of smart technology that DJI has implemented on their drones to avoid drone to aircraft um, collision, which, is happen which is, has happened in the fore. And so something to consider is if you own a DJI drone um, or other uh, high-end drones, they do have that ADS-B uh, feature built into them to receive what aircraft are coming inbound. Um, they don't ping out. They just receive in. So uh, let's discuss frequency, right? Frequency on ADS-B is running at the 978 through 1090 megahertz spectrum, right? So that's why we can use a basic antenna like such to see all that information. Um, if you did want to kind of receive more more data, I would recommend then getting an antenna tuned to that frequency pattern right there, right? If you do want to get into ADS-B and you're watching this video and you don't have a porter pack, um, or, or a Hacker F1, you know, I would recommend then going the, the Raspberry Pi unit over here. Okay. This is Raspberry Pi. We got a little external speaker that has a built-in battery into it. Okay. Let's get this out of the way for now. Okay. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi 4, I believe. I think it's the 4. I forgot. It's, anyways, um, the SDR that you can get is the RTL SDR. Um, this is the RTL 2832U. And this one, I got on Amazon for 35 bucks. RaspberryPi.com has a actual breakdown of how to do um, ADS-B on their own website. And I'll put that link below. 
Um, but from there, again, you can get into looking at all the fun stuff regarding ADS-B. So, um, of course, don't go without BNC. BNC is the way to go. Estimated BNC. I got to put that in all my videos because I, I absolutely love BNC. It's like the fastest plug and play ever. You know, like if you wanted to take the antenna off of this guy and just throw it on there, like bam, dude, done. You know, this is a small standalone unit. You got a speaker, you got an antenna, you can throw a battery pack on the back of this, get a little four inch screen and Bob's your uncle, Wi-Fi tether off your phone if you want to, like super simple setup, right? So Anyways, so something to consider if you don't want to fork out all the cash and you have a bunch of parts lying around for a Raspberry Pi build, you don't even need a speaker for ads B. You can just go directly like that, right? So this speaker is on Amazon. I think it was like 15, 17 bucks. Um, so that's pretty good. It's a decent, decent little volume speaker. Something to consider if you want to get into ads B without a forking out, you know, the 150 for the uh, AliExpress Porter Pack H2 or if you want to fork out the cash for an actual Hacker F1 unit, which I think standalone, they run like Hacker F1 or Great Scott Gadgets. I think they're like 250 or 300. I can't remember. I'll have to put the, the link uh, below. So uh, one of my favorite shows is 24, actually. And I, it's a season seven, actually. They build this device, um, some terrorists build, build a device similar to this, actually, that is a spoofing program that they use to spoof traffic control and to spoof other airplanes and they actually cause a, an in-air collision using something similar to this spoofing out hey plane a is here plane b is here and click um, anyways that kind of covers briefly uh what ads-b is and i'm actually really excited because i'm getting quite a few pings here at this time and we just got this guy right here so let's go ahead and dive into here before we call it quits. There we can see the ICAO registration number. Uh, it is a Red Wing Aeroplane Company. Altitude is 33,000 feet. Its heading is 137 and its speed is 464 miles an hour. So we get the registration number. It is a Boeing 777F land plane. It's two engine. And this one actually doesn't have an owner, but its operator is by Eva Air. So that's kind of interesting that we don't have an owner permission there. Um, and again, that's going to go into how the ICAO was registered and um, whoever registered this plane does not want that public information out there as far as the owner, but we can see the operator, right? So, so we're coming uh, south. What is that going to be? Southeast bound uh, for my area. Um, so this is, this is going to be north up here, south on here. East is this way and west is that way. So coming southeast and to kind of dive into and, le and learn learn more about because I had no idea about any of the uh, registration information, um, even the frequency range of what these things run at. And I had no idea until I started diving into what units um, in, the, in the civilian life have ADS, HB. And uh, I was surprised to find that that DGI puts puts that in their drones you can if you are a drone operator or a drone builder you know and you did want that that feature they do sell modules that you can put into your own drone so that's kind of cool uh, and i'll put a quick little picture and a link if you're interested in that kind of stuff um other than that that's going to cover ads dash b i finally got through saying that correctly because that was a tongue twister for me for sure i'll throw the links to building your own uh, Raspberry Pi receiver. Like I said, these things are pretty simple. Um, this is all mostly off the shelf stuff. You don't even, like I said, you don't even need a speaker, just the RTL. And you don't even have to have a Raspberry Pi, might, might I say. This will run on any Mac or PC or Linux. So you can get into ADS B with 35 bucks and a good antenna. So something to consider. Anyway, thank you all for watching. You know, I appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you got any questions, again, reach out to me. I don't mind answering you guys. You guys are awesome, so I appreciate okay. it. So stay tuned for our next segment on the Porter Pack H2 um, Hacker F1, which is going to be APRS, because I'm not going to do boats because I don't have any water in my area. I mean, there's a lake in my area, but... I'm not going to drive to the lake in the middle of winter because, well, there's no boats. It's frozen over. So, um, But, yeah, next segment will be APRS, which we did a brief 
a uh, little tidbit on that. We're going to dive more into APRS in the next video. If I ever do make it down to the coast, um, back to Texas, I can definitely take this with me and then we can get into all the fun stuff regarding the AIS boats, which is pretty much the exact same thing of ADS-B, but it's for the boat version. So next portion, APRS. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it and take care.